it's Jane Perone, your host, and this is On The Ledge Podcast, and this week we're doing the Houseplant Shuffle. If you're not particularly familiar with this little dance, it's the thing you do when you've got too many house plants spread around your outside space to fit in your inside space. We generally get up to this activity when our other family members aren't looking so they don't realise quite how big our collection has got. But we're shoving plants on shelves, hanging them from ceilings and covering every available surface just to make sure that all our precious house plants come in from the cold for winter time. In this week's episode, I'm giving you a little insight into how I get houseplants ready for winter and talking to Tommy Tonsberg, who is rather legendary for his ever-growing houseplant collection, to find out exactly how he gets his houseplants through the harsh Norwegian winter. Thanks to everyone who said how much they enjoyed Trailing Plants Week last week, our seven mini episodes covering those iconic trailing plants from String of Pearls to String of Hearts. And welcome to the podcast. If you're a newbie, I've had a lot of new followers on social media this week, thanks to a lovely mention by Jamie's Jungle. And I'd love to also thank my new Patreon subscribers, Andy, Al, Emma, Kathy and Tina. They've all pledged $5 or more a month to become a legend and access exclusive content that you won't find anywhere else. Thank you also to Michaela and Jenny who gave a one-off donation on co-fi.com. If you're interested in finding out more about these ways of supporting the show, head on over to janeperone.com where you'll find all details. But you know what? One of the best ways of supporting the show is by leaving a review on your pod app of choice. I just love to hear from listeners about what they think of the show. And this helps other people to find the show and link up with our lovely community of houseplant fans. And speaking of that community... Are you a member of Houseplant Fans of On The Ledge yet? Please do head on over to Facebook once you've had a listen to join this group because we're a lovely, friendly, welcoming bunch and we like nothing better than a gnarly plant ID or somebody with a sickly plant to help out. When you join, there's a couple of questions you need to answer which just help me to know that you're not a bot or somebody who's going to be spamming the group. So please do answer those questions because I can't let you into the group unless you do that. If you've got any queries, you can get in touch with me. And I've also got two lovely moderators on the group as well who are happy to help. And they are the lovely Nathaniel and Amy. Thanks so much for them for helping me manage this group. It's a really easy group to manage because there's so little drama, which makes it a delight to be in. But it's good to have them on board to help me out. Many, many of you have been asking for advice on bringing houseplants in from the outside for the oncoming winter. Well, here in the Northern Hemisphere anyway. And you've also been asking about how to prepare plants that are already inside for a dormant period. And so this is something I felt I had to cover in this podcast. Do go back and have a listen to episode 18 of the podcast, which came out in September last year, which is all about preparing cacti and succulents specifically for winter. That episode's worth listening to if you do have a big collection. And of course, it's going to be different for every plant because there are some plants whose main season of growth happens during the winter time. So we're generalising here, but I hope this will give you a basic guide to what you need to do. So let's start with a little bit of a practical. I'm going to head out and pick up a house plant that needs to come back into the house and show you exactly what I get up to with it. So here I am with a plant that's been outdoors all summer and I thought I'd just run you through what I do when I'm bringing a house plant inside. This happens to be a coleus that's been sitting outside on my patio all summer long and it's been getting really big and bushy uh, and now it's time for it to come inside so that I can get it through the winter time and then get it back outside next summer. So what am I going to do? Well, the first thing that I would do with a plant like this is have a look at the foliage and see if it needs a bit of a trim because 
coleus has a tendency to flower and the flowers are well some people like them they're kind of pale blue um, but they're best removed really at this time of year so I'm going to take off the flowers that are on here and I'm also going to reduce the overall size of the plant now this is tempting to it's tempting when you've got a plant that's looking lush and lovely to just think oh well I've, I'm going to keep this looking exactly exactly as it is but when you're bringing that plant inside from the outside the light levels are going to drop quite dramatically so it's really important to think about how that's going to affect the plant and the main way is that that plant's going to struggle to support huge amounts of foliage in a much reduced light situation so I'm going to be brutal and I'm going to cut this plant right back in the case of this coleus it will bounce back with absolutely no problem so uh, if you've got a plant that uh, is fairly uh, quick to growth up then you shouldn't have a problem if you're worried then you can do this in stages and just see how the plant reacts but I'm going to go straight in there and cut this back by about a third to a half I would say and as always with these cuttings I'm then going to turn them into new plants so I'm just going to take off just above a, a leaf node where the leaf stem joins the main stem the leaf stem is also known as the petiole where that joins the main stem I'm just going to snip just above to take my prunings off which some of which will turn into cuttings it's going to look quite brutal uh, and mean but it's really going to help this plant get through the winter period so it's all good while I'm doing this I'm also having a really good look at the leaves. Are there any signs of pests on here? It could be aphids. It could be spider mites. Now, what are the main signs of spider mites that you'll be aware of? Well, you won't probably see the mites themselves. You'll probably either see some grainy stuff, which looks like um, tiny, tiny, tiny grains of sugar or something on the back of the leaves, or you might see some webbing. And that will be mainly on the reverse side of the leaves. So if you just look at the plant and run your eye over the top surface, you probably won't see them at all. Aphids can also be gathered around, particularly around new growth. Um, so check for all of those things. If you find anything in the way of aphids or uh, spider mites, then the best thing to do is to isolate that plant when you bring it inside. Don't let it be surrounded by other plants that might get infected. And before you bring it in, Make sure that you wipe all those leaves down with a damp cloth to remove the spider mites or the aphids. If you've got something like an insecticidal soap that you can use as a spray, do that. You can also use something like SB Plant Invigorator Spray, which will help to give the plant a bit of a boost and also get rid of those pests. But remember, not all pests occur at the level of the leaves so what you also need to do once you've cleared away uh, any dead leaves or any leaves that are wilting and not really looking in good shape is to also have a look below the surface so I'm going to take this plant out of its pot and have a look what's going along below the surface because lots of creatures can decide to hitchhike on the roots this also gives me a chance to see if it's terribly terribly pot bound this one isn't too bad actually it's been potted up regularly and it's looking okay apologies for the sound um, I'm having some tiling done <laughs> that's why you can hear uh, probably hear the sound of tiles being cut in the background that's life going on but that's okay so I'm looking at this plant it's not too pot bound it's a bit of a dilemma if it is pot bound because then is now a good time to repot in the case of a plant that might be continuing to grow lots over the winter i'd say you could repot but in the case of this plant if it was really pot bound i would just trim those roots and delay repotting until springtime look for any slugs snails root mealy bugs or other um things that you might be concerned about finding under the surface uh, if you find them, then you might want to go to the extent of washing all the compost off and repotting in fresh compost. If you do that, make sure the compost isn't absolutely soaking wet because it will take the plant an awfully long time to dry out. And if you're repotting a cactus or succulent, make sure the compost is completely dry. This one is looking fine, so it's going to go back in its pot. 
The other thing you can do if something's a bit pot bound but isn't uh, able to be repotted is top dress. And this is good for bigger containers. You can just scrape away the top few centimetres of old compost and replace with fresh houseplant potting mix. And this gives the plant a bit of a boost without having to be repotted. So this plant is now looking a little bit uh, threadbare, but this will produce, means it stays a nice compact shape during the winter time. And I'm happy that it hasn't got any pests on it and it can come into the house without causing any major problems. And as I say, these all these lovely cuttings will be going into water and I'll probably just keep them in water most of the winter time and let them root for potting up in the springtime. So that makes life nice and easy. And of course, if the mother plant really suffers, I will have these cuttings as a backup. What I will do with these cuttings, though, is trim the stems back to the nearest node because that's where the roots will emerge from. So there we go. We've got a nice pl house plant ready to come inside and be welcomed in back into the fold. And I've got a pile of leaves which are ready to go onto the compost heap. Are they going to have to uh, be ditched? Right, back to the podcast studio. <laughs> If you think winters are harsh where you live, have some sympathy for Tommy Tonsberg, who lives in Norway, where he's found that houseplants can freeze in their pots on the inside of a window ledge. Yes, it gets that cold. I wanted to talk to Tommy about his ever-growing houseplant collection and how the heck he's going to keep all of those dozens, if not hundreds of plants happy through the colder months of the year. So my name is uh, Tommy Tunsberg. I'm a Norwegian gardener and a houseplant, uh, I almost said fanatic, but uh, I'm very <laughs> interested in, in houseplants. <laughs> I run a small um, small nursery producing perennial plants, herbaceous perennials here in Norway with my partner. And we also have an open garden and a web shop where we sell garden stuff, as well as give talks and write books and articles about uh, plants and gardening. You are one busy man. Tell me about the houseplants, though, which is obviously our focus here. Every time I see you on Twitter, you're saying, I've just had another delivery or I've just been to pick up some more houseplants. So I'm thinking this is a fast growing collection you have. Uh, yes, it is. It has grown um, a, a bit faster than I had sort of um, thoughts, I think. Um, my interest in gardening sort of started with the house plants many many years ago i think my grandmother bought me an orchid and then it just went from there and i got interested in hoyas because people i worked with in the garden center they collected hoyas and from there the collection just grew and i've had a few years off because when we moved to to our house that we live in now we didn't quite know how the conditions were and we had a really really um, cold winter and almost my entire collection froze in the window sills. <laughs> oh, I couldn't man. understand why they were all dying and then I understand that the pot was actually frozen because <gasps> the windows were so bad. Oh wow so you living in Norway as you do you have to contend with some fairly extreme conditions. Uh, yeah. Wow. Well, that's. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you're going to, in that case, give us be able to give us some good tips on uh, getting your houseplant collection through the winter months. So, what are your summers like? Do you do the thing that people do of moving houseplants outside? Are, are your summers good enough that you can do that? Uh, yes, they are. Uh, summers are usually quite warm here where we live in in the uh, east country, so they can get up to twenty, thirty degrees in the summer easily. So, a lot of our houseplants that we give like a summer vacation outside just to give them a bit of extra boost because it's darker inside so it's nice then to get out in the light and presumably those are all back inside your house now though because it's uh, well in here in the uk anyway we've had a few frosty nights now so it's that time already that winter is round the corner yeah uh, we've had frosty nights as well so i started moving a few of them in earlier the tender ones first the ones who are more tender and then uh, the ones who can take a bit lower temperatures 
with photo they're still in transition so they're uh, outside in the daytime and getting moved inside during the night just until we can find out where to actually put them because we're having a bit of a, a space situation at the moment <laughs> i like the way you put that i'm sure lots of my listeners can sympathize with that me too i've got lots of plants in my shed and i'm thinking these have got to come inside soon i'm not sure where they're going yeah it's it is an issue what's your procedure when you've got a plant that's been outside um do you do you do anything special when you're bringing it inside well mostly i just try to check it really really good for pests because i don't want to bring any of them into the house um, aphids and stuff is easy to care for but if i get mealybugs or spider mites it can be a real pain if you have a big collection so i tried to check them really really good um that's basically what i do before i take them in and what, does that checking kind of involve taking things out of pots or just lifting leaves or how, how intensive do you get on the on the on the checking i lift them sometimes just to see if they have aphids on the root uh mealybugs on the root but mostly it's about checking leaves and looking in corners of uh, where i know that mealybugs can hide uh, and stuff like that so it, it's just a thorough check really mostly they're fine but do you have issues with um I, so I sometimes find in fact the other day i was looking at a plant and i suddenly realized there was a small snail living among the leaves yeah. <laughs> slugs and snails here will like will, will climb into inside the bottom of a pot and just sit there and then you'll have a thing where you'll you can't understand why you come down in the morning and that there's holes in the, the the leaves and you're thinking, where's it coming from? And it's a slug that's secreted itself in the bottom of the pot. Um, yep. <laughs> and it's yep. kind of coming out from nighttime adventures, which is somewhat alarming. Exactly. That happens here as well. We have some plants that I take in and we have in the, in the living room or the other rooms of the house. But then I also have a small plant room in the basement that are a bit cooler and that's where the more cooler growing stuff can go during the winter. And there we we find the telltale slimy trails of slugs mm. that have yeah. been around on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I kind of do salute the slug and the snail because they are amazing survivors. They they are amazing creatures. The more you understand about them, the the, the more kooky they are, really. But uh, yeah, I just don't want them on my house plants. <laughs> No, I totally agree. <laughs> and what about those plants that you've, you say you've brought them inside? I mean, you, your winters, by the sound of it, are quite severe. And as you say, your windowsills can get pretty frozen. What, how do you, does it just, is it just a case of like whacking up the heating? Or how do you keep those kind of house plants happy? Particularly things I'm thinking like sort of aroids and things like anthuriums and allocations and things how on earth do you keep those happy inside in the winter when you've got to have your heating turned up high yeah um you have to have um make sure that it's warm enough that was our problem before because we went to work and then temperature dropped when we weren't here so but now we work from home so we can make sure that the temperature is up uh but we also need or oh, we have uh, a humidifier to help so that the um the air doesn't get too dry a lot of them will do fine but it's just some of them it's nice to give a bit of extra uh, extra humidity to them and then our windows are um we still have very old windows so there's a draft that comes in and that's what freezes the pots so when uh, when winter comes i put a bit of um, cotton wool in between because we have double double glazed windows so you can open them and then I put cotton wool in the in between the bottom of the windows and then that helps to insulate. Yeah, yeah. Oh that's yeah, that the drafts can be I there's a very few house plants that kind of almost actively like drafts, but most house plants it's not a good scenario for them. Um I'm thinking of maybe the only ones I can think of that really are would be okay with drafts would be things like aspidistras and um Maybe castor oil plant, Fatsia japonica, would be okay in drafts. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Um, and maybe I saw a really lovely spa. Is it Sparmania in a, in a old, uh, a very old country house? And 
somebody there said to me, oh, yes, this is a great plant for old drafty country houses. It really... <laughs> <laughs> really likes the drafts and i guess you know that in a way that indicates to us the difference between victorian times and now in that the plants we choose you know lots of the plants we have as house plants now would be in the you know the the glass the heated glass house not in your house yeah um so yeah but and do you do you lo- are there going to be a few casualties through the winter do you expect to lose a few plants or i you know do, have you got it so carefully tuned now that your your all your plants will come through okay no um you always lose things i guess even in summer and and even in in winter especially so there are things that that will die um either for for getting too cold for them to like or over watering which can be a big problem when it's so cold and they don't drink enough water so i try to be very careful with my watering regime this time of year uh, but we do lose stuff. We always lose lose things. I imagine the climate, you know, in the winter time is is pretty severe. I'm guessing you get a lot a lot more snow than I do here in the UK, and yeah, possibly for a few weeks you're kind of not exactly stranded inside, but you're you're going outside is kind of a a not a you're not going to be in your garden pottering about uh, during the month of January and February, I presume. Does that mean that the house plants sort of are a really important survival belt during those months when you you need some greenery? Yeah, they are for me definitely because I I live for gardening and plants basically. So, and the ground here will freeze here around the beginning middle of November, and then you can't get a spade in until April. Mm. And the snow will come sometime in December and stay until the middle of March, beginning of April. So when you look out the window, it's only white. But if you can surround yourself in like a green jungle, it feels a bit better in a way. I wonder whether that's preferable to kind of what we get here, which is months of kind of everything's just grey. <laughs> yeah. way, when it snows here, it's quite well, it's quite welcome because suddenly everything looks kind of beautiful and pristine. Whereas most of the winter in the UK is kind of like just grey, soggy, muddy mess. <laughs> yeah. The snow does help to brighten everything because before the snow comes, you think, oh, it's so dark because the light hours are so much less also. And then as soon as the snow comes, even the moon will sort of, light up everything so it seems a lot lighter outside but with those short days does that mean you have to provide any additional lighting for your houseplants as well Uh, we do for some of them Uh, some of them do all right without and if they get too leggy i'll cut them back in spring when i repot them and and the light returns Uh, but i also supply extra lights to those that i think need it And also, because we've run out of windowsills for all of them, I have some shelves in the house as well with extra lighting. So some live under extra lighting all winter because that's the only light they get. How much time a week do you spend tending these houseplants? Um, I'm not. Is that too scary to calculate? (laughs) (laughs) Maybe I should track it. Uh, I usually I have like. I'll spend maybe half a day or something. I usually call it houseplant Fridays because things have calmed down with the business. So I can spend part of the morning just checking the watering and checking that they're all right. I don't think it's more than maybe half a day, a couple of hours. It depends on how much water they they need. Right. So in a way, I suppose during the winter, probably it's less time in the sense that lots of things aren't going to be requiring as much as much water, but perhaps more time in that things might be struggling a bit more and might need a bit more pruning or. I think so. And also in summer, I can usually water almost everything and I know that they'll need water. But come winter, I'll have to check put my finger in the soil and check every pot in case it's still wet so I don't overwater them. So it takes more time in winter. And do you add any temporary additions to your houseplants in winter in terms of things like, um, I don't know, uh, amaryllis, well, ra- or rather hippiastrum or paper white narcissi? Are you into those those bulbs that tend to bloom around Christmas time? Or have you got enough houseplants to, 
be going on with? No, we do buy a few of those as well because it's a nice part of the season, I guess, to get something in that's, um, that will brighten up a bit more during that time of year because most of my house plants will be green in winter. So it's mm. nice to get something in with a bit of color. So either the amaryllis or the paper white narcissus or hyacinths, which is a big thing for Christmas around here. Oh, okay. What Norwegians like having hyacinths at Christmas, that's a particular... Yeah, that's oh. when we have them and not in our gardens in spring. Right, right. Well, I guess, you know, as you say, you can imagine that's a delightful thing to have the scent and colour uh, when everything outside is is so frozen. And what about, do you, I mean, is there a big trade in, in the classic poinsettia in Norway? Do, what, what, what Christmas plants do people buy there? Oh, yeah. Uh, poinsettia is a really, really big, big thing. And it's also produced a lot in this country as well. So loads of poinsettias in different colors as well as red and white and then there's the azaleas in pots they're big the amaryllis um cyclamen the bigger ones they're always around for christmas uh, we have some begonias uh, what else i think that's mainly like the traditional christmas uh, house plants and apart from those Christmas pl- house plants, will you continue buying house plants during the the winter, or do you kind of ease off adding to your collection when it's so cold? Um, that's a very difficult question because a couple of months ago I thought, well, I have everything I want now, everything I need, so I won't be, <laughs> I won't have to buy anything more. And then you go to a garden center or something, and they go, oh, that's new. I've never seen that before. Or you go to one of those dangerous websites and order oh, the every- websites yeah so dangerous <laughs> order everything you thought you didn't need or that you've never seen before and realize you really have to have so what are the latest and sexiest additions to your house plant collection what have you been importing from far away well i got a big shipment from thailand the other day and Ooh. there was lots of nice um, piper species like climbers with nice leaves and then uh, philodendron varicosum with very very lovely leaves and is your partner equally as crazy about houseplants as you are uh starting to uh because in the beginning it was oh another one or i don't think you should get any more but i think he gave up at some point (laughs) but (laughs) but now he sees all the new interesting stuff i think he's um, he gets more into them oh well, that's that's a relief because you don't want it causing yeah. domestic rows uh, over the the number of house plants my mum just arrived for a visit after being she, she lives uh, in canada and she came for a visit and she said oh you've got a lot more house plants than you had the last time i was here in the spring i was like <laughs> oh yeah you're probably noticing it more than i do but yes yeah, so um my collection is yeah. growing too and yes and it's got kind of that kind of look of why do you need all these plants and you just can't really explain it but <laughs> you either you either get it or you don't i think or, or you have to kind of just uh hopefully over time you can show people can learn the beauty of these things and, and appreciate it but yeah i think i think the collector's spirit is a, is is good and strong in both of us by the sound of it yeah it's dangerous, but it's also quite fun. It's very <laughs> fun. That's the main thing. And I kind of think, you know, if you're going to have an addiction, this is quite a cheap addiction. You know, plants aren't that expensive. If you were into classic cars or, you know, I don't know, handbags or very shoes, true. that that could get expensive. Whereas, you know, plants are quite cheap. They're not a great deal of money to buy, uh, especially if you're doing, you know, doing lots of swaps for your Hoyas, then, hey, um, it's a cheap yep. hobby. So... All our friends and family should be grateful that we're into plants. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. And they're so easy to propagate. So you can so easily make more and give away to your yeah. friends or, or use for swapping. Exactly. That is half the fun, isn't it? It really is. And I don't know about you, but whenever somebody comes to my house, they usually go away with some plants or some cuttings of something or other. Um, so uh, that's a nice feeling to be able to spread spread the love. Exactly. That happens here as well. Thanks so much to this week's guest, Tommy Tonsberg. I'll put all his social media and other links in the show notes, but you can find him on Twitter as at Tommy Tonsberg. 
I'll be back next Friday with another episode of On The Ledge and then I'm taking a week off for the 26th of October back the following week. In the meantime, keep your potting soil light and fluffy and your spirits high. It's Perone over and out houseplant fans. Bye! music you heard in this week's episode was Roll Jordan Roll by The Joy Drops and O oh Mallory by Josh Woodward, both licensed under Creative Commons, and Hot Lips by Bill Brown and his Brownies. See my website for details. 